Hey guys, Roger here. Welcome back to the channel. And yes, I know, I do have a problem. I love the Fortnite Llama, so I've probably overdone it slightly with all the llamas. <laughs> But that's the theme of this video, of course, Fortnite. And I wanted to show you guys this nice little easy Fortnite PC build. And you can actually build this same PC for around $400, probably just under $400. And for a gaming PC built with all brand new parts as well, that's not a bad price. You won't find any super powerful hardware here or some incredible graphics card or anything like that. In fact, this build doesn't need a graphics card and is running Fortnite 720p at 60 frames per second and around 45 to 50 FPS at 1080p. That is with low settings, but I'll talk about all of that in a bit more detail soon. Just before I get further into the video, if this is your first time here, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you like this video or if it helps you at all, please give it a thumbs up as well. So how on earth can you run Fortnite without using a graphics card? Well, I am of course using the AMD Ryzen 5 3400G with built-in Radeon RX Vega 11 graphics. Why am I using that CPU or APU? Well, because of the price. It's really nice and cheap, and when you first build your PC, you may not have enough money for a graphics card as well as everything else that you need. So this budget build lets you start playing games like Fortnite immediately. And then of course, you can decide to add a graphics card in the future, and that's really easy to do. So the case we're using for this build is the Atomic case from AeroCall. This is one of their new cases, and I like this a lot because it looks good, but that super large fan in the front will push loads of cool air through the case, which is essential, obviously, for keeping the build cool. The case is fairly small and it holds a micro ATX or mini ITX motherboard. So I'm using the ASRock B450M HDV because I think you get good value for money with ASRock. And although I'm using a standard SSD drive for this build, you can add an M.2 SSD in the future and you can connect up to four SATA SSD drives to the motherboard. So there are plenty of options for storage upgrades in the future. I will also just say that I'm not going to go through all of the specs of the PC case from AeroCall, but you will find a link with all of the rest of the information about that case in the description below. It's a really nice case. The processor is AMD's Ryzen 5 3400G, so you get four cores and eight threads, a base clock speed of 3.7 gigahertz, and the important bit for this build is that, of course, this chip has the integrated Radeon graphics. Yes, you'll be able to get much higher resolutions and frame rates with a dedicated graphics card, but we're sticking with the integrated graphics for now. Keeping the processor cool is the Mirage 5 air cooler, again from AeroCool. As with the case, this air cooler is RGB addressable, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna let it do its own thing. RAM is something I'll talk about more in a second, but initially for this build, I used eight gig of crucial DDR4 RAM, which is running at 2,666 megahertz, so not incredibly fast, but I would've got faster RAM, but of course was trying to keep the price down, and I would've had to have waited for quite a long time for the other RAM, so I just went with this one in the end. The power supply is the Cylon 600 watt 80 plus, also from AeroCool. And I like their power supplies because again, they're reliable and they're also good value for money. The last piece of the puzzle is just a simple 240 gig SSD from SanDisk, which will be enough for me to install, of course, Windows and Fortnite, and there will still be plenty of room left once I'm done. Oh, and just going back to the case, well, the Atomic case has 15 RGB modes. You can cycle through them by pressing the LED button on the top of the case. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, you can also control the RGB using your motherboard software if you're using a compatible motherboard. So I think for a very simple, very budget build, this doesn't actually look too bad. It's all about really keeping the cost down. So although I could have used bigger and better parts and a more expensive case, I stopped myself from going crazy, uh, basically to keep the overall cost nice and low. Okay, so I played Fortnite first of all at 720p and I had the settings at low, medium, high and epic. The results weren't terrible, but the frame rates were not quite as good as I'd hoped. And of course, I then realized I'd only used eight gig of RAM. So I actually added another eight gig to that, which gave me 16 gig, of course, in total, still though at 2,666 megahertz. With the RAM sorted out, I started playing the game again at 720p with, of course, low settings at first. And the frame rate was pretty stable, about 80 FPS. 
With the four night settings on low, you do have to compromise, of course, a little bit. You can't see too far into the distance. And things like shadows and effects are, of course, all on their very lowest setting possible. But the game is still very playable. Medium settings gave me a fairly similar result. The frame rate was jumping around from about 60 to 70 FPS, but again, the game was still playable. With high settings, you definitely can start to notice the frame rates dropping a fair bit lower to between maybe 40 and 50 FPS, so not really terrible, but I'm always trying to get as close to 60 FPS as possible. Finally, with epic settings, well, this is where you will see the integrated graphics starting to struggle. Most of the time, I wasn't actually getting any higher than 30 FPS. Now, I can't say that I'm surprised, and I wouldn't want to be playing the game like that, but it's just to give you an idea of the performance, of course, with epic settings. So that was all at 720p, and obviously, as you increase the graphics quality settings in Fortnite, you're going to see the frame rate dropping. And then if you do the same thing again and run through all the way up from low to epic at 1080p, obviously, you know, you're going to see frame rates dropping quite a lot. So is this the perfect Fortnite gaming PC? Well, no, obviously not. But by tweaking the settings and perhaps keeping the resolution at 720p, you can play Fortnite at 60 frames per second very comfortably on a PC that costs less than $400. And you always have the option to upgrade it in the future where you'll easily then be able to achieve 60 FPS with fairly high settings with, I don't know, as an example, let's say a 1650 Super graphics card or something similar. If you want to go and look at any of the parts I use for this build, I will put links to all of it down in the description. Also links to the case as well, so you can have a look at the specs if you're interested in the atomic case from Aerocall. Feel free to go and have a look, that's in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video or you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, let me know in the comments below as well what you think about this build and also what you think about the Aerocall case as well. I'm Roger with Life of Tech, and as always, see you in the next one.